and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. And like in the previous um, set of Mailbags, I'm recording a single header um, for many, many answers that you guys have left on the channel. And there is a lot to go through this evening. Um, so before we get going, remember these are Mailbag questions and, and comments that you guys leave on the channel that are well worth actually sharing with the wider community. But before we start, we always go through parish notices, which are, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not? Hit the subscribe icon. If you want to be notified about when uh, videos hit the channel about things like this thing that's just off shot, which is the Ida 2400, that's the bell icon. If you like the contents of the video you're just about to watch, you know what, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the video on the YouTube algorithm. Also, leave comments down below. I do read them, I respond to them, and that's the reason why we're having this mailbag conversation now. And finally, for less than the price of a cup of coffee, consider supporting the channel by becoming a member of the TMTG community. The address is down below, as are the Instagram and Facebook tags where the normal channel notices are posted. But now back to this particular mailbag. Oh. Okay, this one comes from Mitch Laser. Uh, and it's in response to da -da, installing more memory and a new battery on your Corgo Oasis, a video I did in July 2018, which is just after I got my Oasis. And uh, Mitch writes, I've inherited an Oasis with four discs but no registration disc, won't boot up. Is it a doorstep? Cheers. Um, no, um, and I hope it, that it isn't a doorstep. Um, these machines are wonderful to work with. So um, when you say you have four discs, it's unclear whether these are hard disks or, hard disks or, or CDs. Um, but like any computer, the Oasis boots up from hard drive. If your machine is not booting, then that would be my first port call. Make sure it's properly connected to the motherboard. Make sure it exists. It actually is inside the machine um, because I've had somebody contact me and say my, my OSIS went boot and when I've directed them to the hard drive, they found that actually there was no hard drive in the machine at all. Somebody had taken it out. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's the first thing I would do. If the hard drive is connected and it's still not booting, you might try reinstalling the operating system. Um, I found when I bought my Oasis that there were a number of things that were wrong with it and the easiest way to deal with that was just to reformat the hard drive and start again, which is exactly what it did. Um, if you don't have um, the, the OS disks, then I've been through this literally within the last two weeks with, another, with somebody else via email. You need to get in contact with Cork Support, who I believe in the UK are in Milton Keynes. I don't know where you're based. Um, but they actually, for me, they were really responsive. And within a matter of days, I had um, all the relevant disks I needed to actually restore my um, Cork Oasis back to its base state and then upgrade it all the way through to release 1.3.3a. So um, it's really, it's a really easy process as well. It's all kind of next, next, next. Very little stuff you have to change. So I do hope this helps. I do hope you can get your OASs back up and running. Again, this is another one of those names that I'm not sure I'm going to do its pronunciation. Par Carpe Gian. I'm hoping that's right. I apologise if it's not. Uh, and this one's in response to the Roland MX1 USB correction VT4, VT4. VT3, VT4 video I did. I'm not sure when I did that because I haven't written the date now. Um, but it was done quite a while ago, I can assure you. So it's possibly it's a 2019 or 2018 video. Anyway, he or she writes, um, I would like to use the VT3 inf interface to record my songs onto a PC, but I can't. The problem is the return of the sound, the sound generates a feedback and constantly recording is superimposed. What should I do? Um... This is an interesting one because it's, it, it sort of sets at the sort of fundamentals of recording. Um, now, if you put any sort of microphone in front of a speaker, you're going to get feedback. That's just the way, the way things work. Um, and generally, what you don't want to have is you don't want to have um, audio being fed directly into a microphone, which is why I'm, a lot of microphones on stage are obviously um, very uh, omnidirectional, as in 
the microphone is there and the, and the mouth is there and the speakers are behind it. So it doesn't pick up a radiated um, feedback. But it still happens, and it, when it does happen, it just goes it just goes mental. I mean, I was at a Hall & Oates concert um, ooh, two years ago now, and Daryl Hall was having a real sort of Barney at the stage sound engineer because basically they had a feedback issue that went off that they didn't have during the sound check. And of course, the, the on-stage sound engineer had to bring all the levels right down, and then he couldn't get it set up the way Daryl Hall wanted it set up. And... He was not happy bunny, but the concept was good. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I kind of read this a couple of times. And as I say, feedback is normally caused because you're amplifying the source signal is being picked up by the, the, the microphone and it becomes a feedback loop. Um, and I don't know how you have your, 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 your system set up, so this kind of advice is a bit, bit generic. Um, first of all, if you are actually playing this back through monitors, turn them down while you're recording. Um, that way you don't have direct sound hitting the microphone. So if you're if you're recording uh, and you're stand if the microphone was there and you're you're singing into the microphone like that, then you need to have the speakers there pointing at you, not behind you pointing at the microphone. Make sure you have a good uh, omnidirectional microphone that doesn't have a wide range on it. So, you know, you're looking at something that sort of has a fairly narrow range to, if you are using live monitors. It's why in a lot of studios, everybody wears cans um, so that they, they don't actually have the vocals feeding back on themselves. Otherwise, you end up with feedback. Um, so that's the second type is to, is to sort of look at the, um, the pickup angle of the microphone you're using and see if you can get it down to quite a narrow field if you're getting feedback. Um, and if you go to manufacturers' websites, if you look up the microphones you're using, it will tell you how how, how broad or narrow the field of, of pickup is. Um, and in these sort of scenarios, you don't want really broad pickups. You want very narrow narrow pickups if that's what you're doing. Um, bear in mind, the more narrow the angle uh, does not necessarily mean it's great results for, for recording, by the way. Uh, and the other thing is try switching the speakers off and using headphones, which is what a lot of professional studios use, is they, they put cans out there rather than running live vocals. Um, and a good set of headphones with closed backs for recording and mixing can be obtained for about £100. Um, no, you might not have that in your budget, but that's, that's kind of, I think, where I would be... Um, probably ending to more aiming towards would be, I mean, this is how I do it here. I mean, when I have people singing here, um, quite often, um, or during last summer when I had a, when we were allowed to have people uh, in the garden, I had somebody in the garden singing, and actually I was sitting in here um, recording. So, you know, there was, there was spatial difference and I had these cables running through the window so that, <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. Um, anyway, I hope that gives you a few ideas on, on how to do this.